Hello, my name is Larry Borowski from Greenslade & Company. Today we are going to learn how to set adjustable ring gauges the right way. Um, there's lots of different methodology or guys ideas out there about how they're supposed to be set, but if you do read the standards, you read your ASME B1.2, ASME B1.16, your IFI standards, your H28 standards, they all agree that the only way to set an adjustable thread ring is by a set plug. So let's go ahead and check, check this out real quick. What you have here, this is uh, one style of set plug, the most common. It is a truncated set plug. So what that means is that, I don't know if you can see this from, from the video, but you've got a full uh, the length of thread. This front section up to about midpoint is what's called your truncated section and the back section all the way to the back here is called your full form section. So what that does is it, it you, you want to set your ring to your full form section and then your truncated section will evaluate the um, any flank wear that happens to be on those ring gauges. Today we have a 5 16 24 2A go and no go ring gauge. We're going to thread that onto our go set plug. Now, as you can see, that's a, a little bit loose. What we call is that's a, a free spinning ring. It means that it continues to spin after I've let go. So that is, that is a bit loose. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring that to the back section, like we said before, onto the full form section, fully threaded onto the full form. We are going to, you've got two sets of hardware in a ring gauge. You've got your locking screw and you've got your adjusting screw. So first things first, we're going to have to loosen our locking screw so that we can do our adjustment. Now, <clears throat> it gets a little tricky and backwards with this because as you, as you tighten your adjusting screw, you're spreading the ring out, which makes it looser. So you're, like, you're tightening and it's loosening the ring. So we want to actually tighten the ring up, so we're going to back off or loosen our adjusting screw. So you loosen it up a little bit, looks like it's got some good drag, then we lock down our locking screw and then we check it to see if that's a little bit <clears throat> a little bit too tight so let's go and try this again. Typically you'll have to go back and forth with this process a couple times to get it perfect. Yeah, that's much better. It doesn't, it doesn't spin at all. It's got nice drag on it. And you, we're fully on, fully on the truncated section, and it's, and it's still got good drag. So <clears throat> what you want to do, because a lot of people, they like to use their ring gauges um, label side in. So what we want to do, we just evaluated it one way. You want to flip it around and just double check to make sure you're where you're actually the same type of drag all the way up the set plug. If that's good then what you have is a good ring gauge. What you'll find is many times, like I said, a lot of people tell their employees to always insert into this side. That's a bad practice to get into because what that does is it wears your ring unevenly. You should just use it entering from both sides. Our go ring is now set so we'll put, a, put that off to the side. We'll come back and we'll evaluate our no go ring. We've already done the setting so I can pretty much tell you that this is going to be good. But just in case, you know, if we would have dropped the ring or it got mishandled in any way, um, the setting can change. That's why it's always a good idea for end users of ring gauges to actually have their own set plugs on hand so that <clears throat> when they've got a job out there on the floor and they're uh, you know, coming up with some problems that they can go quickly just go evaluate the ring gauges and make sure that there's nothing wrong with the setting before they actually start rejecting um, product. But this no-go looks like a good, a good fit as well. And before we um, pass this on, we want to make sure that no one else is going to be messing with this stuff. So 
what we do is we call it, it's called tamper proofing. We actually fill these, um, the holes up, the, the fastener access up with wax. Now, a couple different ways we can do this. This is kind of the, the old way of doing it. I'll just, I don't like this way, but I'll show you just for, so you can understand why. Um, you kind of just, you melt the wax and it drips, you actually drip it into your, your spot there to block the hardware access. What I like doing, makes it a lot easier and a lot cleaner, is we take our go ring, we use our glue gun, we actually just fill in one side with the glue gun, the hot glue, fill in the other side, and then set that off. And then we got a nice little red red glue for the no-go. Now one cool thing that you might or might or might not know about ring gauges is that a lot of times, you know, after years of use and abuse out there in the shop, your your markings tend to come off. You know, you don't you don't quite see the size so well, you, or you can't. Is that a go or a no go? But um, you can always tell a no go because it always has this this groove around the circumference. So that's a quick and easy way. You got two ring gauges down there, and they're both the same size. Your no go is always the one with the groove. So we're now ready to check some product. We've got a sample, a 5 16 24 sample. Basically, the way these, this works is that you actually, you can thread the faster in or sometimes it's quicker to thread your ring gauge in. But the way, uh, the way it's supposed to work is you're supposed to, the go ring is supposed to go the entire thread length. That means if you, if you get, it, get that going up the thread and it stops there and you're like, uh, 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 it won't go any further, then that's a bad part. Um, something changed with that pitch diameter between the front and the back. So you might want to look at your setups or talk to someone. Now, your no-go ring gauge rules state that it can't go on any more than three complete turns. This one stops right away, so we don't even have to count turns. But typically what you do is you get your thread engaged if it's close, and you kind of just pick a, pick a reference point, say this split to where my thumb is and you just rotate around, this one's only about a half a turn, so we're way good on these threads. So just to wrap this whole thing up, remember to keep your, your set plugs clean, your ring gauges clean when you're going to go do your calibration. Throw a little oil on it, make sure you set your go to your go, and your no-go to your no-go side. You definitely want to evaluate the ring going one way and then take it off flip it around and evaluate it the other way for any uneven wear that might occur. You want to make sure you're, you're tamper-proof hardware and you're ready to start using it for checking product. Um, if you want any more information on this type of calibration or stuff in general regarding threads and thread gauging, you can give us a call at 817-870-8888. Um, you can also visit our website. There's a ton of articles up there regarding the same sort of stuff with more pictures. And um, we'd be happy to do the calibration for you if you're not so inclined.